Guardians, welcome back to Destiny. Today I decided that I was going to show you through my Blade Dancer setup because uh, there's not many videos out there like that. And I think that for PvP, a certain, certain setups are necessary because if not, you get put at a disadvantage in certain situations. So, obviously, this could be open to opinions, suggestions, differences, all sorts of stuff. But personally, this is the way I like to run my Blade Dancer. So I use skip grenades, because then if I weaken an enemy and they run around the corner to escape from me, I can throw that around the corner without risking any damage to myself and basically get the kill. It's a way of ensuring a kill even though the opponent knows that you're beating him and turns and runs. You know, it's a, oh, and another way of looking at it is you can also use it to block people off from running from teammates. So in trials, if you see a teammate engage someone and the opponent runs away, you can throw this into his path, forcing him to turn back around to find cover, which in the end meets his doom because your teammates are. Well, unless your teammate really sucks in that case, maybe not. Secondly, my jump. I switch between Blink and Better Control. I'm not too sure which I prefer as of yet. Um, I've recently started using Blink just because I find it gives you an advantage when charging an opponent down and when trying to escape. If someone runs at you with a shotgun, you just hold back, double tap A, you're out of there and you're gone. Um, whereas with Better Control, you can actually jump round corners quite easily which helps when shotgunning and again when escaping because you can jump around the corner and well basically outmaneuver the person chasing you down so them two definitely had have their advantages higher jump I'd say stay away from because you don't need to jump higher in PvP the higher you jump the more time you get the more likely you are to die it's that simple now for my super I know a lot of people use vanish but I prefer not to because if somebody starts backing off from you and keeps backing off and keeps backing off, you're not going to kill them. Whereas if you use Raze's Edge, you can just release the destructive wave and be done with them. So that's why I prefer using that. It just helps out when you get that dodgy little warlock that decides that he's going to glide out of your way. Um, Showstopper, mm, you're not really going to get much opportunity to use that, so it's a waste, really. Now, my melee... Melee, I use backstab because it can really pull you out of certain situations, mainly with shotguns, when shotguns are the meta at the moment. The meta? Meta? Depends what you want to call it. Tomato. Anyway, yeah, when you run up against a shotgunner and he misses his first initial shot and tries to melee you to finish you, you will get away with some of those using this. And not only that, but if you sneak up behind someone that's chasing a teammate down, it's a one-hit kill. It's that simple. Brief invisibility. I'm not keen on the invis invisibility thing. It's like... You can still see them. So unless they're really blind and just don't bother looking, you, it's not really any use. And fast twitch reduces the cooldown of blink strike. Again, I don't think that outweighs the benefits of the bat stab. So I use bat stab. Now... For this one, you have Path Forgotten, which basically focuses on toughness and speed. Path Forbidden, which is focused on battle recovery and speed. And this one, which is focused on battle recovery and toughness. I go for this one, because combined with the other one, it gives you a decent amount of armour and a decent amount of agility, which I find are both crucial for PvP. Because you need agility to escape and outrun the opposition, the other person, and you need armour to survive. Recovery, it could be argued that it's still useful, but I'd rather be able to run away, hide somewhere and recover then, rather than recover quicker and get back into the fight quicker, because that also means trying to find an advantage point quicker, which puts pressure on yourself. Um, quick draw. I don't really, I've never really used any of the others. I mean, that probably good for shotgunning, but 
no. I prefer weapons ready immediately because it gives you an advantage over Titans and Warlocks that don't have that perk. Uh, it basically means you have your, re your weapon ready near enough instantly. But then if you combine that with a weapon that has snapshot, you're aiming and zooming in near enough within about a second or two. Giving you that advantage in terms of timings to get the first shot off and win the 1v1. Where are the fearless? These two, again, it's just a combination of having average armor and average agility just to get an advantage in battles. Because you're not going to recover in a battle. You need to get out to recover, so therefore the armor and the agility helps you do both them things. And then the last one, you've got Encore, which extends the blade dance duration. Or art blade. That used to be a good perk, but now with the nerf of the blade dancer a couple of months ago, reducing the time that the blade dancer is actually active, it's not so significant. Getting invisible after crunching the place for short time, stalker. Again, I don't see the big advantage to invisibility perks, so I don't use them. And then the last one, hungering blade kills with art blade and blink strike immediately regenerate health. Definitely the best perk though in my eyes because you're going to be getting shot at when you've got your super. So this just counteracts a lot of the damage that's coming your way when you've been popped. So therefore it can actually save your super at, some, at certain points against shotgunners, snipers, melees, you name it. It can pull you out and get you that 5 kill streak compared to 2 kills. You know, So that's why I use that one. Um, as for exotics, if I was going to use an exotic, I'd use the Mask of the Third Man. Because of the fact that it just uses less super energy when you try and do an outblade attack. Meaning you could probably try and s keep it going a little bit longer. Um, there's not really any others that are combined with it. Uh, you've got... Oh, which one is it? See, there's none of them that are really specific to the art blade. I mean, art reduced art damage there. Art grenades and art blade recharge faster, so you could use that, but I don't. And then boots, you know, everybody knows what the boots are like for a hunter. It basically increases maneuverability. So I use bones of EA or because I find the other ones don't really do much significant increase in terms of your performance so I just find bones of EAO help me actually get around a little bit quicker plus they have sniper ammo so yeah <laughs> anyways that is my blade dancer that's the way I have it set up for some well I've explained my reasons I do quite well with it it helps me survive and it helps me get kills and I have the blade dancer hunter cloak on which I think looks awesome Especially with the Sea of Tears shader. And I also have the Blade Dancer emblem. I am just a Blade Dancer. So, I hope you've enjoyed watching. And I will be releasing the video on my Gunslinger setup next week. I don't use it as much, but I still have one for when I do. And I do think it is one of the best supers to countering other supers. Um, at range, anyway. Um, obviously close quarter combat they're probably the best super is the striker but I don't have any titans <laughs> I will see you next time I hope you enjoy watching